In this short video, I'm going to talk to you about integers and place value. Now, very simply, an integer is a whole number. So the word integer means a whole number. So there are lots of integers, starting obviously with 1, 2, 3, and so on. And any other whole number, like 10, 15, 23, these are all integers. I can carry on as far as I want to. So 256 is an integer, as is 20,403. All of those are integers. Those are all positive integers. We can also have integers that are negative, negative whole numbers. So negative 1 is an integer, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. So negative 10, negative 20, negative 32, negative 483. All of those are integers. They are negative integers, negative whole numbers. There's one other integer we haven't talked about, and that is zero. So zero is also an integer, even though it's neither positive or negative. So integers are whole numbers. So numbers that aren't integers will be anything that isn't a whole number. So for example, 2.5, that's not an integer because it's not a whole number, it's a decimal. And likewise, 0 0.1 is not an integer because like 2.5, it's a decimal. So if we look at a number line, we're starting with 0, which is an integer. We can obviously add our whole numbers going up the number line in the positive direction. These are all integers. And then going down from 0, we've got negative 1, negative 2, and so on. These again are all integers. Now, there's one other word that we need to be familiar with when talking about integers, and that's the word consecutive. Now, consecutive simply means next to. So when we're talking about numbers, consecutive means numbers next to each other. So if we look at our number line, 0 is next to 1. So 0 and 1 are consecutive numbers. And we carry on. 2 and 3 are next to each other. Those are consecutive integers or consecutive whole numbers. 3 and 4 are consecutive, 4 and 5 are consecutive, and so on. And down here, negative 4 and negative 5 are consecutive whole numbers or consecutive integers. But we might be asked to find consecutive even numbers or consecutive odd numbers. So if we were going to find consecutive even numbers, that would mean two even numbers that were next to each other. It doesn't matter if there's another number in between. It's just the two even numbers that are next to each other. So here, our even numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So consecutive even numbers would be 2, and 4. They will be consecutive. Or 4 and 6. Those are consecutive even numbers. Or 6 and 8. Or 8 and 10. And also, we can have even negative numbers. So negative 2 and negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 6. Negative 6 and negative 8. Any of those are consecutive even numbers. Consecutive odd numbers work the same way. So look for consecutive odd numbers. Again, in the positive numbers, we've got 1 and 3, 3 and 5, 5 and 7. And any of those pairs are going to be consecutive odd numbers. And again, the negatives, negative 1 and negative 3, negative 3 and negative 5, negative 5 and negative 7 will all be consecutive 
odd numbers. Now zero is neither e uh, even or odd, so we wouldn't count that when we're asked to find consecutive even or consecutive odd numbers. Okay, now let's have a look at a, a quick couple of questions that you might be asked to, to do with place value and integers. So here we're given that 24.6 times 18 equals 442.8. So this is a calculation we're given the answer to. And then we're asked to work out the value of two calculations. Now each of these calculations are related to the one we've been given, but the numbers have been changed by either making them 10 times bigger or 10 times smaller. And it could be 100 times bigger or smaller or 1,000 times and so on. So in this first one here, we're dividing 442.8 by 246. Now if we look at the original calculation we were given, we had 442.8 and we had 24.6. Now 246 is 10 times bigger than 24.6. Now you should know that if you multiply two things together and get an answer, that answer divided by one of your first numbers will give you the other number. So 442.8 divided by 24.6 would give us the answer 18. But here, because we've been given 246 rather than 24.6. That means this number is 10 times bigger. And so our answer will be 10 times smaller because we're dividing. And when you divide by a bigger number, the answer gets smaller. So if we were going to do 442.8 divided by 24.6, that would have given us 18, like in the original calculation. Here, because we've got 246, that's 10 times bigger than 24.6. The answer is going to be 10 times smaller, and so the answer to that will be 1.8. Now over here, part B, again we've got a related calculation. This time it's a multiplication, and we're told the calculation is 246 times 18. Now we know that 24.6 times 18 is 442.8 and here 246 is 10 times bigger than 24.6. So that means that our answer will be 10 times bigger than the answer to the original calculation. And so the answer will be 4,428.